Um, she goes, no, I want a man all to myself. Well, how about the, then the question is, how about a man that you have to share that's worth that's a millionaire? <laughs> she, well, yeah, I mean, uh, how much of a millionaire? You know, I mean, then it becomes this negotiation. Um, what would you do if you had to share a man? I would never share a man. Well, would you? What about I'm trying to? What about Jason Momoa? Would you share? Well, yeah, I mean, I could see, and some girls would say no, not even that, which is probably it's bullshit because you don't got that. Once you get that offer sheet, yeah, 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 yeah. So you go, you, and and once so, Jason Momoa goes, listen, I got a part time contract for you. We're ready to sign right now. <laughs> And he goes, and then he it gives you, and then he turns around, and gives you that wink with the one eyebrow. Gives you the wink sliced. with the big eye, the one yeah. that the big bushy eyebrow with one yeah. that's up. Yeah. And What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, it's just the, it's just the family, me and Harry. We kick it about uh, how to be authentic, going over the principles of the of, of what this podcast is all about. What are the real sacrifices of a relationship and the flaws of pickup artists? Um, this is a real good one. Just, yeah. I'm trying to. Do a lot more of these where we where we go over technique and and reasoning why things are so there's a better understanding because the blueprint is there you know all you gotta do is call me up and i can put you through the blueprint but i think of sometimes they don't understand well it's always good to reinforce all that stuff and you know all that technique and if you like the technique stuff uh that we talk about relationship stuff you're gonna love what we're doing over at patreon uh patreon.com slash manschool202 we do a lot of in-depth a lot of uh in-depth technique stuff that's where we do listener mail like this week's uh bonus episode on uh, patreon it's an exclusive listener mail where uh, we talk about dealing with non-physical women uh uh when to tell a woman that you're not being monogamous and again, the uh, the different styles of how you're telling the truth and, and holding your value. So a lot of those questions, and we do a lot of technique there. And uh, it's available. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Please come and support us. And also, we do consultations. You can reach Dante at uh, DanteNero.com slash consult. And if you want to consult with me, uh, my consultations, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. All right. Let's get it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions? Being podcasting, and I am excited. So, so excited. Harry was popping. You ready to rock and roll? I'm definitely ready to rock and roll. Listen, man, you know, I've been, it's, the winter's here, and that makes it even harder to keep these gators down. It's fur coat season. I'm That's happy right. as hell. That's your that's your time. That's where you shine the oh. most. Ooh, and do I shine? I got I just took all the fur coats out of out of storage. It's ready to rock and roll. And that's not easy. You got to freeze them, right? You got to put them in a freezer. Get a cold storage, yeah. Oh my goodness. You got to do it for the season, but here's the th the thing. I found a coat that I forgot about. You did. Well, that happens yeah. to you. You tend to find things you forgot. Which one did you forget about? I had a, a natural mink bomber. What makes it a natural mink well, bomber? Well, natural natural is the regular brown that you would see, like rich white ladies on Fifth Avenue. They would okay. have like a, like that brownish, the pretty brown, uh, almost like a, I wouldn't say tan, but it's like a, a rust and brown. You know, the regular. Okay. You mean the what the, what the, the color, the natural color of a mink? Is that what it's meant to be? I mean, it is. Yes, yes. It would okay, be what's that. an yes. unnatural one then? I don't know. What's the opposite? I have, I have a blue fox. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, foxes aren't blue, right? So it's dyed. Right. right. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Of course, a fox. Or red fox. So I, have a, a, I have a bleached white mink and, a, you know, a couple different colors stuff. So it's it's a the natural color of the thing. Just like my coyote is natural sure yeah the wolf and coyote but well anyway. i have a similar thing going on i had to take my pea coats out of the freezer oh, they're good geez. to go they're good they're good to go the pea and coats and my, you, and my bubble jacket i got my bubble jacket out the bubble goose my 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 pea coat my canadian <laughs> goose knockoff my it's uh my mexican <laughs> goose that i wear <laughs> during the winter <laughs> and i'm good to roll fair enough fair enough ready i'm i'm ready for this cold weather and i'm 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 excited it's, it's just gonna be us today so yeah, doing a little information, a lot of a lot, lot of a uh, lot of consultations, a lot of things that I think are misunderstood, 
a lot of things that guys are getting wrong, I think, because they pay basically not paying attention, which is which is really when you get down to it, that's the problem in the first place. Uh, the 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 thing most of all that you gotta you have to do if you want to be good with the ladies. I mean, if you want to be good in life, you have to listen. And I know this is, sounds like something simple, like to overkill, but it's just nobody's paying attention. I remember when I was when I was coming up and I would be promoting shows where you actually had to hand out flyers, right? Mm. And they'd be like, "Oh, when you when you when's your next show?" And you hand them the flyer, and they go, well, "Yeah, what day does it fall on?" And then they, you go look at the flyer, and they go, "Yeah, but is that a Saturday or Sunday?" You go look at the flyer, you go, "How much is it?" It's on the flyer, so it's just like people don't listen, and they're missing so much. Why so, do you think that is? So, but they don't. I, I just think that people are too busy in their own in their own mind and their own life that they're not paying attention. Which is weird because how do you navigate life if you're not paying attention? You know, I don't I don't think you can. I don't think it's a situation where you can not pay attention. And, and I think so more moreover than night, I think people think that life that they're very reactionary to their life. Things so happen. How about this? I'll jump on there with you uh, as far as paying attention and seeing things clearly. Yeah. Uh, my girl and I did a friend's uh, a friend's giving at somebody's house, right? You know, you get mm. together. It's like uh, you bring, you know, same thing like Thanksgiving, but with friends. And we're playing. Uh, it's couples and stuff. So we start playing whatever the thing. You pull the card out and you got to list the names. I forget what it is. You got to list the names. You got to. You, you got to just. They got to guess the word. You got to. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a list of words you can't use. So if it's right, whatever, right. whatever the game is, couples right. inevitably start arguing as fun and whatever. But it's funny because my girl and I were looking at each other because every time, like. You know, it's funny that you're fucking it up or they can't guess yeah, it. Like, yeah. well, But they're calling each other stupid and dummy and idiot and all that. And my girl and I are kind of uncomfortable a little like bit. Quince, like a little bit wincing. And it's not even you. It's just like. Yeah, because and they're not and they're not even. It's still fun. Yeah, right. And they're still in good spirits with each other. So it's not mean. But at the same time, we don't do that in our relationship. Right. And so yeah. it's uncomfortable for us to see that because we're like, Jesus, man, that's not. You know, you're belittling somebody, even if in a joke and you're like, because what happens is if you do that when you're having fun, you're definitely doing that when you're pissed off yeah. at each other. Yeah. You're definitely cursing at each other and saying, you, you know, you're stupid. That was stupid. What the fuck is wrong with you? And that's not good, you know, yeah. but it's just the to them. It's just normal to us. We're watching a f film in a foreign language or something. It's you just notice like that's not good. Now, were you physic? Uh, were you guys physically uncomfortable? Like, could you, if you were on the outside, would you, could you tell how uncomfortable you guys were? No, we communicate. I mean, we know because we know. Like, we have a connection, me and my girl, because we've talked about that. Right. And she knows the show, so she's, you know, she listens every week. Like, she's familiar with it. Right. So we have like we just make an eye contact and we make a note to talk about it later on the right. ride home right but we don't you know we're because we don't want to in a weird way to make them uncomfortable or wince or whatever so we just yeah. make note of it and move on but the point is like you said when you don't pay attention like we're fully paying attention like that's not yeah that's not that's cool. not good because it's as soon cool. as there's as soon as there's bad blood or something you, you stupid is easy you been yeah like if you if you if you cry, this is the thing too about you know um you you once you once you once you sell some pussy, you are always a hoe. You're just negotiating price. You know, there's never once you cross that line, it makes it so much easier to cross it again. And that goes. for. But the rule is, you know, I, I did a couple of consultations. I've had a bunch this week and I'm literally where guys are going, man, they, they get on the phone and they go, man, you know, this this stuff works. In every like it works in my job, it works in my you know whatever whatever right. Yeah, we say um, that every day, every time. Every time they say that, and I go, yeah, I, I we say that too. We say that on every show, <laughs> right? But it's but this is again why you're talking about people not listening, like and and I'm and I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying it's it's, it's literally a situation where because um. Because they're not paying attention, they don't even hear the parts that they could hear, you know, th that they should hear. 
from me. I don't know what's going on with this. Mm. It's giving you a little focus issue. Maybe the lens is a little dirty. You want to yeah, maybe. wipe um, that off? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's a th yeah, it's it's interesting that people I get that too with the show where we go uh the number of times you speak with somebody, whether it's a consultation or or sometimes you get a listener mail and you you go we we've definitely covered this. Like yeah, yeah. just the the simple like how do I get girls to how do I talk to women? You know, we yeah. get that a lot. You're like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we talk about that on every show, which is yeah. you got to yeah. Do the lay the five bricks, which is well. You know what? I I think that's talking some, to five this, women a day, a just in a non-sexual good situation. Thing. Because what we're talking about, even when it comes to that, it, it, I think that maybe we are assuming that they understand it or we're clear about it. I mean, we've said it so many times. I think sometimes we say it and just kind of move on, and what we're not really not realizing is that we're not emphasizing it. Um, for instance. Um, uh, the, we, you know, people understand authenticity, credibility, and, and empathy. So we all understand that those are the principles. And I, I think what, what I want to do today is I want to go over these principles and just, and I think we're going to have to do this every once in a while. We're going to have to do this show a couple of times a year to get people on track. So sure. authenticity is being, is telling the truth and being your authentic self, Right. Um, that means it doesn't mean you have to be a, a, a bastard, but it does mean that you have to pay attention and you have to understand what's being asked of you and what's in any conversation. So truth is really important. And I, and the reason why I say the truth is important is because if you're not truthful, one of the most attractive things that, to, that a woman will find is the fact that you make her feel safe. If you are deceptive, I mean, now I know guys who can be deceptive or maybe what we would consider mysterious and women find that attractive. But on a core level, if she can't trust you that you won't hurt her or that you don't have some ulterior motive. Good. They, only, no. they only find it attractive until it bites, until it affects them negatively and bites them in the ass. And then they don't they don't the, the mystery goes quickly goes away. What do you mean? Like, to bite. Uh, Meaning like it's fun and cute if some and it's usually the more attractive, the more leeway you get with the mysterious man or whatever. Mm. But when it starts to actually affect them and hurt them, then they go, oh, I don't like this so much. Like, what well, do you mean? Are you saying in the context of somebody that like some uh, this guy, girl is already attracted to this dude and he's mysterious? He's being deceptive, but he's being mysterious. Or what do you like? Give me the scenario meaning like, you know, we can. uh you know, a guy who, oh, I can't get a hold of him all the time. You know, he's not easily accessible. And that's that adds intrigue. Like, oh, he's out and about. He's, you know, whatever. Right, and that right. adds intrigue until you find out, oh, he's fucking around on me with somebody else. Then it hurts them. And then that that's where the authenticity matters. Where you're like, oh, he's not a man of his word. He lies to me. Right. The second it starts to hurt them, it that goes away. That's why it's important to be authentic because... On the front end, you know, she's into this guy because, okay, he doesn't need me. He's not, you know, he's he doesn't schedule around me. I don't know what's going on with him. And they're intrigued by that at first. But when you find out he's disingenuous and not true to his word, when it, right. when it hurts okay. them, well, then they can't he, trust you anymore. Here's this interesting, you know, I've used this terminology, shoplifting the pussy. Shoplifting right. the pussy is being that you are demanding something but deep down you don't think that you're worthy of it um you don't have the self-worth to 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 want that uh, a guy in a relationship you can have anything you want if you ask for it the problem is and all of all of it is attainable but it's attainable if you understand you have to understand what the sacrifice you need to do to to make that to to get that so that sacrifice could be any number of things depending on, but there is a, always a, a, a path from where you are to where you want to be. The question is, are you willing to make the sacrifice to get there? So if you want, you want to live in a house with two girlfriends, you want them to love each other, you want you to love them, y'all the one big happy family, that can be had. But in order for that to, to be had financially, you have to be able to 
to to to to be in a case where you can support that, even if they're working. The 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 ability, or you have to satisfy those people's needs where they're going. Listen, I um I want yeah I, I okay so he thinks he's worth that right mm -hmm. now if yeah. she says I don't think he's worth that then it it's not gonna work but then if you get your val when your value is higher so so maybe so like for instance it's all a negotiation so a girl would be like I'm not gonna be with no guy and he she got a girl that's just not true because if it's Drake right mm -hmm. and you yeah. know that you can't you know that you can make to, those. You want to play backup on Drake's team. You, yeah, and now the you, now you're you're dishonest because you don't really want to play backup, but your intention is to play backup with the intention on moving into the front row. But you're willing to deal with that, even if the guy says, well, "This is never going to be happen. This is it's this. I'm going to change this." But you can have those things, but you might have to have. Uh, you might have to have. You know what's the the dude name the whole Samoan dude um, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa, you might have to have his looks, which means now you you got to go to the gym. That means you can't eat the cheeseburger. You might have to be fine enough that women are sought after you. They they you are a you are a snack for these women. They, you they women see you as the prize just to be with you. Um, in order to get that, think of the the sacrifice. If you're like, forget if you're me and I need to look like Jason Momoa to get somebody that he's getting. I'm talking about day, day, uh, diet, workout, uh, just yoga, just extensive. My job would have to be about my looks, you know? Right. It's, um, a, it's a big time commitment. It's and it's a sacrifice. Now, yeah. if I get there. It's very possible that I could, I could, and it doesn't mean necessarily that those two girls I have in mind are going to fit it, but you can have what you want. You got to work to it. It's it's a weird thing. I know when you, you know, I mean, I, I remember being with 12 chicks at one time, just in a rotation and everybody, they didn't know, each one of them didn't know each other, but they knew there was somebody else and they knew that I wasn't, I wasn't letting anybody dictate you know what I wanted to do, or they what knew I did. They were on do. a roster. Yeah, and if they asked me, I would be like, "Yeah, I'm. I'm seeing other people. Like, I, I wasn't honest in a way where I was trying to devastate their life, just make them feel worthless. But, I, but to the same token, if they asked me the question, I'm going to tell you. If they had said to me, "How many girls are you dating other than me?" I would have, I would have totally answered, which honestly wouldn't have made them leave half the time. 99% of the time they're not they're not leaving. It's just it's like uh it's like Super Bowl tickets. You are willing to wait online to get Super Bowl tickets because you know those tickets are sought after. They have value. Not only do they have value and they have prestige and all the things that go with it. The question is are you willing I see this all the time with guys want to want certain things. Well, I want this and they haven't really thought it out. I mean, having multiple women in your life means that you have to step up. That means, and we talked about this. It was funny. I remember when we had that conversation. Sure. You was, yeah. you was heading to Pennsylvania. Tired oh, as shit. Jesus, yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, you Driving could to just, Pennsylvania. I was like, you, I said, Harry, you could not do this. But if you're going to say, this is one of the chicks on the roster. Mm -hmm. When she yeah. want to fuck, you got to go show up. I got to give her something. You, I got to give her something to, to, and even to then, keep her there on the roster. Where you were like, I can't make, I, I just can't make this run. You know what I mean? But yeah. if, if you want this spe special parameters to keeping that up, there's special parameters to getting it. The special sure. parameters to keeping it. It's and communicating, you, got, you know, especially if you want somebody on a, on a roster, so to speak, where they're involved and they're a, re, you know, a, a, I don't a repeat customer. If they're coming back with the, you know, and everybody understands what it is, I'm open about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was back in the day. I was open about it. Um, you know, I let them all know, and so you have to whatever the the need that you're fulfilling within them, even if it's not a actual boyfriend. 
there's something right. there. There's some type of connection. With some girls, it was just purely sex. Okay, then you got to deliver on that sex. With some gotta girl, deliver. it's some girl, it's what a happens little if bit, you're tired? You got to go. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta what, drink, what drink a you... Red Bull. You gotta drink a Red Bull and a couple uh, pills, and you gotta, you gotta make it happen. That's it. You gotta That's it. get on board. Yeah. Or you gotta, get the fuck you gotta, because if you... you gotta be like an old time West doctor. You gotta rub some water, cold water in your face. Get a Boil hot pot of, uh, get a hot cup of uh, coffee going, and then you know, get in there. A Joe, a nice yeah. hot cup of Joe. And you yeah, gotta get in there, you even get when in there. you don't want to. Even when you don't want to, because it, you can't. Now, listen. There's thing, and when you talk about that, there's even small things in the relationship because I we we get on the roster, and some people want that, and that's exciting, and th that's the consequence of it. But even in the confines of a relationship, listen. If you want to be in control of what you're doing and not have questions asked, then you better be providing financially. Right, you better be the one who has everything in order. I so mean, that unless I, I would, I don't know if you could say financially, but I'm saying if that is an if that is a need, yes. If that's what the need is, right? Because right. I mean, like Oprah doesn't, you know, she don't need your money. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I mean, and I know that's an extreme situation. Yeah, of course. But, but it my... is realistic to say whatever those needs are, she's going. So, you, you know, it's like. It's not just I, the finances. Forget the money part of it. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever that is. A lot of the times, it does involve money, in the sense sure. of you know, if I'm the one who wants to call the shots of what we do, and yeah. she trusts me, then I have to be making sure that I'm on point. When I say financially, I mean I got to be making a living. If that's what we're doing, if that's what we're providing, if that's the agreement. If she makes more money than me, that's fine. If she wants, if she's okay with you sitting at home and just being a house husband, that that's part of the deal. But yeah. whatever it is. You know, you have to provide. You got to be on your whatever you that list what, is. Yeah, that makes it because you're making a deal. You're not you're not shoplifting the pussy. You're making. She's going. Um, she goes. No, I want a man all to myself. Well, how about the then? The question is, how about a man that you have to share? That's worth. That's a millionaire. <laughs> she. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, how much of a millionaire? You know. I mean, then it becomes this negotiation. Um. What would you do if you had to share a man? I would never share a man. Well, would you? What about? I'm trying to. What about Jason Momoa? Would you share? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I could see. And some girls would say no, not even that, which is which probably is bullshit because you don't got that. Once you get that offer sheet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you go. You and and once so, Jason Momoa goes, listen, I got a part time contract for you. We're ready to sign right now. <laughs> And he goes, and then he it gives you, and then he turns around, and gives you that wink with the one eyebrow. Gives you the wink sliced. with the big eye, the one yeah. that the big bushy eyebrow with one yeah. that's up. Yeah, and you go, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm gonna get it notarized right now, right? <laughs> so, and I understand that what I'm saying is that this is the extreme examples, but they they can range from extreme to very for for not. You know, to uh, you could have you might get some chick who's crazy, gone through all kinds of trauma, and she's looking for somebody to give her that excitement that she has with the trauma to meet her trauma. And she'll go through all of that. It's it's any number of things that turns you on. Nobody gets to say what they are, but the person and nobody. But you are presenting a deal. And you can present every deal that you want. But if you're not, you know, if you're not a guy, if you can't meet the parameters of the deal, then the deal's not going to get made. But any deal can just about any deal can be struck. You know, um, the short period of time that I I did swing, right? Mm. Little sex parties and stuff, my thing was, yo, you could fuck a chick. I don't want no dude fucking you, which you, you call it soft swinging. Mm. So she could fuck with women. I didn't really care if, about if she fucked. In fact, I kind of liked it. She could bring women home, but it wasn't. It was guys. I didn't want no guys poking around in, in my attic. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> you don't even want guys looking at the door. What are you looking at? There's none of your business. You keep it moving. Hey, get away from me. He's yeah, like, the bathroom's I'm, that way. Uh, this is a pub. This is a public easement, and I have a constitutional right. To yeah, <laughs> I can record the police. So, um, but it is just that you can have whatever you want. The problem is that people are not paying attention. You have to make the guy. sacrifices to get those things. Everything you yes. want 
comes with it. Even just a regular something. relationship and nothing's comes free. with sacrifice. Yeah. It comes with sacrifice, whether it's like, hey, the amount of time you spend with her is a sacrifice. Like, you yeah, know, it's never a lotto. It's never you hit the lotto for 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 eight billion. Right. Or for for a billion dollars. For Without tax. There's million. always tax. Then there's a tax. There's and tax. then the stress, more money, more problems. Then yeah. you're somebody who has never had that kind of money, never had to live, always live check to check. Now you have money, but you don't have the knowledge to manage that, that, that some, and you got to pay attention. So now things that you never, when you, when you, I remember a dude, uh, two dudes was in front of my house early in the morning, arguing about 49 cents. Just, I go, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? What's wrong with y'all? Yo, yo, I apologize. I'm like, here, here's a dollar for you. Here's a dollar for you. Now beat Get it. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, oh, thanks. But the point is, you got to be at that level. I mean, I'm I'm talking like it was a big shot because I gave each one of these grown ass men a dollar. But to them, that dollar was everything to, to the point where they were all they were going, getting ready to go to blows over 49 when, cents. When you have nothing, yeah. a, a, a 49 cents means something. Yeah. yeah. And when you have more than that, it doesn't mean as much. That's just human nature. And but, when you have everything, you don't respect what you have you take it for granted you do take it for granted yeah when you have it i mean it's it's insane and that's not any that's people in general people in general that's the tendency of human beings um the question is what's the sacrifices what sacrifice are you willing to make and then um and, and if you're really working on yourself if you're really working on yourself then you have the confidence to say i am worth this now she can always say no thanks or whatever, but when you say I am worth this, and women feel the truth, they can sense how how serious you are about that. It, it it they look at you in a whole different way. Every consultation that I've 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 done, um, like in the last month, you know, they or the follow I should say the follow up consultation, where I'm laying out what I want them to do. Then I have them call me back in a week or two weeks or whatever. When they call me back, they always like, oh, it was just really amazing how much this changed my perspective and this and that. So there's really a reason why there's a thing to to uh to being so I, I think a lot of times the guys feel as though I'm harsh, right? And they're going, well, I could never do that. That's Dante's style, right? Sure. And so, or, or, but what, what they don't understand, it's, it's like trying to make a bomb and you don't have all the ingredients. You, you can't substitute the ingredients. If you want to be powerful, you have to do all of the things. And I'm not exaggerating in the way you do it. I mean, we, we break, I break the system down into s such small pieces. It's very explicit and very mapped out what I need you to do. I can't get anybody to do what I tell them to do on it. But I mean, we've had, I've, I've had so much success with so many guys doing a portion of what I've asked them to do. So I, I keep thinking to myself. Well, listen, the, the thing is that you have to think about, I think I think about uh, rehab or whatever. There's the, the, per, the percentage of rehabilitation that I, when I talk about drug and alcohol rehabilitation, it's actually very small, the number of yeah. people that succeed in it. But that's still better than nothing, number one. Right. And the, 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 they say the, the program works if you work it, if you do it. So it's, it's just everything has a price and you got to be willing to pay that price. And if you're not willing to pay that price, I promise you, I promise you, you you won't get what you want. Um, there's never a uh, how would I put it a, a meritocracy. There's never a one to one. You don't get you don't get back. You don't get what back you put in. You never you get back in. what you put never in get that as back. a man. You just don't. And but I, you I, don't, I don't mean that out of selfishness. No. Even even just the needs and the sacrifice you got to make as the man in the relationship, most of the time, almost all the time, uh, you never get the return on investment. That's not what it's about. If you're in a relationship, we say this all the time. If you're if you're in a relationship, you are losing, and that means you are. We don't mean that you're a loser, you're a sucker. 
what we mean is you are giving something up. You're giving you up your time. You will make sacrifices yeah. that other people won't make for you because the element of being a man, and ele the element of being a man, me need that you you make those sacrifices. The, the the position that we have is is sacrificing. If you're the man in the that's, house, that's what it means. That's not, and that's not women are bitches. Women suck. It's, it's, it's not, not that. that. It just it's the nature of 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 humanity and and the needs that women have versus the needs that we have. It's not saying one is better. It's just the needs are different. We don't. Well, I, I give you one even better. It's yeah. it's money, resources, and protection as an exchange for reproductive rights as an exchange for your immor your immortality really like your child is your dna moving to the next generation is the Im is the immortality of your dna strand and so you're you're making this decision that's what the transfer is now i'm not saying you have to have kids i'm not saying that it's it's a you but what i'm saying is that is the thing that she can give you that you can't give her. Right. It's, yeah. That's just one example of something. Yeah. And we don't expect it in reverse. You can't expect it in reverse. No, no. That's just biologically need, something. I don't that, need my chick to know to, to be able to take a right hook like I do. That, right. That's not necessary. Right. I don't need her to physically to physically protect be you. able to protect me. That's just not what I need. So we're, we're talking about us being different. And and what's interesting is, and I, let me clear this up because I've had people talk. I Mike Rabiglia asked me about this. Well, how do you deal? He asked me, how do you deal with this philosophy when it comes to gay and lesbian and trans and the LGBT community? And what I explained to him, it's it's masculine and feminine. I mean, we call it uh, we call it masculine, but it's dominant and submissive. There's always somebody in the relationship that is more submissive than the other person's then nobody ever matches it's yin and yang there's a balance and, and it doesn't so, mean that one per they're subservient or they're they're lesser than it just means no, that as far right. as the roles go they want someone else someone somebody wants the other party to take a lead even if it's a little bit more than they're, and I'm they're not, doing and i'm not even dictating that you know like people say well i don't want women the dishes as well that's not what i'm saying i mean i know i know uh, I hate washing. I'd rather clean toilets than than wash dishes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the same way. I'm the same so, way. So it's about what you like, what you like, and and basically your compatibility. And it's also nobody's fault that you may not be compatible, or that you may change in the future to get to the point where you where it doesn't work. So, um, you know, it's it's a weird thing. So, I, so, and I think sometimes I've had a couple of guys who call me. And they didn't do what I asked them to do. And they go, um, well, I didn't want to call you and 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 you yell at me. And I'm like, <laughs> I go, first of all, I'm, I'm not yelling at you. I, I just want you to understand that you say this is what you want. This is I mean, in fact, let's let's be honest. This is the. The first, it goes everything back to the same thing. This is the truth. You told me this is what you want. I would tell you how to get it. I will say you need to do certain things in order to get those things. You will agree to it, which is the second part, which is credibility. You said you would do it. You agreed to it, and then you didn't do it. Now, I'm not going to get mad at you for that because of the fact that this is your life. The all the all of the outcomes are not outcomes that I that that I benefit from or lose from. I mean, I benefit from your success when when you do well and you could say, "Man, thank you so much." It gives me a great feeling to see a guy to get up, get his feet under him, and say, "Man, my life is better because I've talked to you." And Harry, you you could testify. They say that all the all time. All the time. All the time we get, we get, we see people on the street or they send us uh, a message and say, thank you for changing our life. You changed and, and, our life. And we listen to, to Andrew Tate and they listen, rest his soul. Kevin, Sam Kevin Samuels, our Lord and Savior. Our Lord name and above Savior. that, name. Um, name above that I name. get the guys who said it. There, there was a guy like a link like there was a Tom Lycan. Tom, Tom Lycus. Lycus. Yes. Yeah, Remember yeah. that? 
Oh, I remember Tom Likas. Yeah. yeah, Tom Likas was a red pill dude. So you have sure, these guys, yeah. Derek Jackson, who was another guru. <laughs> um, there's who it's else? Not a red pill. He's the anti red pill dude, Derek Jackson. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's another he's hypocrite. Sick. Tom Likas, I didn't like as much because I think he was married four times, uh, and he, he also he, threw he, apparently allegedly threw his wife into a fireplace once. Really. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't end well uh, for a lot of Lycus' relationships. But he started, yeah, he started early on with uh, with it. But he was definitely angrier. Anyway, your your point and being, was, I'm sorry. so so. You, but what I realize is these guys. But the, but here's the thing: I'm practicing these principles. This is this is the yeah. difference in the authenticity of of what Man School is and all these other programs is because. I'm practicing these. I'm practicing these on a truth, daily basis. Oh, I'm this credibility, and so even when you, if you think I'm mad at you, or I'm going to be mad at you. Then you're 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 assuming that I don't practice the principles because what's the last principle? Empathy. I know that it's difficult to make changes. I know that this is emotionally scary. I know that there's going to be failure. I know that you're already bogged down that you've taken enough L's that you don't want to take any more and I understand that and I understand that even even when you're on track there will come a time when you're off track and you're going to have to recalibrate and I'm I'm aware of that and I'm 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 here to help in any way I can for as long as I can until you get to where you want to get but this this the guilt and everything there's no guilt if your if your intention was authentic, credible, and empath empathetic, it goes to everything. I had a um, I had a dude who called me up, had a problem. It wasn't even a a relationship show, but he was he's working on on a job and it's he's panicking because he just got hired and he doesn't know the so his boss is a new hire who's a horrible boss. Um, and so it's a it's a tech job, right? So the without getting too in the woods, the tech job is so extensive. The work that needs to be done takes a long time and it's very tedious work. So in order for the work to be right, you have to really take your time. So this new guy is going. Uh, we got to get this done. We got to get this done. Why is because he's a new boss. He wants to impress people the people above him and he's expecting his underlings to be impressive so that they can impress him but meantime the the time management what he's what they're asked what he's asking his people to do is just time wise is not doable so he called me and he goes you know i'm just kind of feeling funny because i don't want to lose my job this is but this is really involved and this is really a lot and the guy's pressuring me and and so on. So, and so this is what I told him to do. I said, I said, well, who who is who's the guy that hired you? He goes, he's a step up from this guy in the company. I said, we well, contact him and say, listen, I'm in a situation where there's this is the task that needs to be done. I can work faster if that's what you want, but I would have to I would make errors because it's so tedious. And I just want to be clear that. I'm interested in staying here. I'm interested in working hard, but I think the evaluation of what this is going to take is wrong on my on my 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 immediate boss's side. So I just wanted you to let you know and maybe if maybe you have a solution or something because the, his boss kind of had his job before, right? And I I'm, I'm I don't want to get too far in the weeds. Anyway, I told him talk to your superior and just be honest. Hey, this, I love I, I love the job. I love being here. I want to succeed. I want to live. I appreciate the opportunity and I want to live up to your expectations. But this is not really doable. And I and then I said, then you go to your underboss and you approach him. You say the same thing, because even if they fire you because you couldn't cut the mustard, right? You've given it all that you could give it. Nobody's going to, if you're going to them and say, I'm willing to do whatever it needs to do for me to be in this situation. What, but what, here's the funny thing. The boss, the big boss basically said, yeah, that is a lot. The timing is not right. I'll deal with it. So before he would even got a chance to talk to his immediate boss, the, 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 the VP 
said, listen, we're going to revamp everything and we're going to delegate in different ways simply because it just simply because he went and spoke honestly. Now, yeah. the reason why I said to speak to the superior first is because they have the real power. Secondly, the, the his main boss is is under pressure as well. This is where the empathy, empathy comes from. He just got it as a boss. He doesn't want to complain. If they're asking him for deadlines, he's not showing up with these deadlines. He's His job is at risk. So he's going to slave drive you so that he doesn't get the heat. Shit rolls downhill. But the minute you go and you go with the honesty to people who are willing to hear you, right? Whatever their decision is, is their decision. You don't have to feel negative. So even if you lose the job, you told the truth. And if the work, if 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 the workload was too big anyway, it doesn't you weren't going to do it anyway. So there's no uh, this, the minute you start finagling and lying and 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 giving these these truths, these these half truths, which is an it, which is an intention to deceive. You end up in a situation where now you're hiding something. Soon as you're hiding something, what happens? Insecurity sets in because you're you're every day you're putting this mask on to say I'm I'm you because you don't want to get exposed. So and this is the thing with the pickup artist stuff. You put a big hat, or put a funny hat on, and put goggles on, and do this. All of these things are disingenuous to who you are as a person. And so when it comes around, you're already carrying these lies. You don't think you think you ain't shit. You think you're worthless. So you're you put looking on a at costume this... to, to make it look like you're something, but you exactly. didn't fix any of the inside. And, and, and every girl that you're with and every girl that you're talking to, she's going, she's going, it, he just doesn't seem as though he's confident about this. It's just it, there's an incongruency. And what do we say about the indecisiveness and the incongruency always makes a woman feel safe? It's like, why is he acting weird? It, it makes her feel unsafe. The indecisive unsafe. unsafe. Yeah. Yes. So if you, so it's it's indecisive. It's it's flaky is indecisive. Indecisive seems deceptive. Deceptive means I got to get out of here. That's how women think. Be and they have to think that way. Because sexual assault, rape, any and anything in between that, including just a broken heart, being emotionally hurt by something, is on the line for them every day. And they know that they are they are super susceptible because they're the weaker, at least the physically weaker spe species. They have their strengths. And so they have to have the empathy. And if you're not you're not aware of that. It, like, think about that. If you if every guy that's listening to my voice right now realizes that every time they ask a girl out on that, she has to consider whether or not she'll be raped or murder before she goes. Yes, to the Olive Garden. Right. She has to think, well, is this guy crazy? Will he murder me? Will he rape me? Will he kidnap me? That is. And, and, and I know that sounds extreme for men, but it's a reality. That is a reality of a, of the woman's experience immediately. That's what she has to consider. So when you if think about if you thought about that every time you you realize how you would watch how you approach people, you realize how you would not do the things that let be so into your own head about your own acceptance. You touch inappropriate or you talk inappropriately or you whatever that all because you're aware of the landmines already because you have the empathy, you know, and so many guys don't do that. They don't do that. And it's, this is not being extraordinary. is not easy. It's difficult to do. That's why most people are not. Um, but if you embark upon it in small increments, it will happen. And even, even if it doesn't happen all the way, it'll happen in a way that's uh, it'll happen. Your your life will be exponentially better because of it. And I think we have to, um, you know, it, it, who can say that? Who can say that they're living their life and then in the process in the process of them living their life, um, they can say, "Listen, a year from now, I'll be in a better place than I was before." Ooh. That's 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 building up. That's building yourself better. There's nothing wrong with that. 
it's, better to be, you know, it's better to, to go, I'm better now than I was, than going, geez, man, I used to be so good. Or, or, or even or better, just, how, I about, never how about the fact anything. that you go, the clock is ticking. Right now, the clock is ticking. What if you said a year from now, I'm going to be in the same place that I was before? Like, that's a dreadful thing. Yeah. That you're not so so, but if you could say, listen, I don't know where I'm gonna be, but my situation absolutely will be better by the time, yeah. by the time. I always year, tell this people. I, I remember telling my brother this one time. He was going through some stuff, and uh, you know, I said, "You're young. You know, no matter how old you are, you're still young. If you were a 60 year old guy, right, the life expectancy is normally like 80 or something. Right. If I told you that you were gonna do 20 years behind bars, right, you'd be like, that's a long time. Yeah. Right. Like, that's yeah. a long time. But we don't look at it that way when you go, you could be around. Even if you're 60, you'd be around for another yeah. 20 years. If you changed your life and yeah. led a better 20 years, wouldn't that be something? You still have time to fix things. You got a lot of time to exist. Yeah. Why not make it better? And this is the younger one or the older one? This was the younger one. He didn't listen. He and uh, what, ended what, up, what was his response to that? He, you know, in the moment he understood what I was saying, but you know, he's yeah. still he's just turned thirty. He's still got he's still a fuck up and he's still a drug addict and he's got a lot of work to do. In here's my the opinion, other thing. allegedly. Yeah. It, it, well, here's thing the other a thing. Fucking that's lawsuit for my own brother. Oh, this is again something else? No, nothing I, else. Oh, but he's just yeah. not he's just not all together. Yeah. By the way, yeah. he sold me drugs. Anyhow, there we go. Yeah, Let's yeah, get that yeah, on the record. Yeah, make it easy. <laughs> so so it's anyway. but what's interesting is even when you think about that, um, you, you get you have to, and this is the other thing that I find every show that I listen to, they well, Kevin Self, Kevin Samuels, our Lord and Savior, he did mention yes. no uh, name above that name. No, <laughs> he shall be named nameless. Yeah. Um. He did talk about therapy and stuff like that. But what 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 I've been doing and, and, you know, the show is constantly evolving is that you have to enter in the trauma, family trauma, racial trauma, uh, you know, I, just any, you know, just the wear and tear of, of, of work. The, you know, the fact that your parents, you grew up with parents who and let's be honest, I mean, even if your parents were Ph.D.s. If they're, if, you know, you you get like um, good friend of, you know, good friend of the show, good friend of mine is Godfrey, but Godfrey's parents were professors, so it's like they didn't understand what it, they. How could they understand being Nigerian, and and how could they understand that? Well, I can make more money telling jokes conceptually. They don't even understand. Like that's not even within their grasp to think so. Now he achieved that. But in their mind, to them, education is key. This is this is how they broke. So so even their thought process, they, they couldn't understand that somebody could be making a million dollars. Six figures, seven figures. Six yeah. figures, seven figures, doing sketches out in the street, playing pranks and stuff like that. So you we literally have to, you, you cannot even rely on the people that wrote that raised you because of the fact that prospectively things have changed so much and it's it's so different and it's changing constantly. Um just you know it's so different, you know? It's yeah. so different. It it it's something that you have to it it life constantly changes and you gotta evolve and you can get better at it. But it, the thing is, no matter what you're you're dealing with, you can always make those changes. You just have sure. to acknowledge it and put in the work. And you can be okay when it doesn't immediately pay off or it doesn't work out immediately. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a long process. Something I always say, I've said this, you know the greatest thing in the world about being a bitch? And I mean, or a punk, I don't mean bitch, that bitch or a punk. So, you know, where you let people walk away from you. The greatest thing about that is tomorrow you don't have to be. Yeah. That today you can stop it. Now, when you stop it today, everybody is still going to try you and they, because they they have no reason to think that your state of mind is different. But with time, they will recognize that this person is different and I need to treat them differently because they respect themselves. And so, I mean, I, I think that's dope. I, I want to take the... I'm not even going to wait. I don't want to wait for the 
Patreon a shout out. I mean, if y'all want to check us out, please support yeah. us um, on the Patreon. Uh, the Patreon is uh, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. And I want to shout out my new, uh, all the new, the new uh, Patreon members. Uh, there's Brandon, uh, uh, there's Brandon, uh, Mr. Tripp. Uh, Danielle Syed, Brian Lorenzo, and Randolph Henderson, all new. Let me make sure that's all. Randolph and uh, Mantis, uh, got screen name Mantis. She want to say, shout y'all out. Thanks for supporting us. Really appreciate you, man. We love doing this, we love helping y'all. And uh, you know, just uh, you know, I just want to make sure we shout y'all out. Right now to let you know how appreciative we are. Harry, talk to me. Hey, listen. Yeah, please support us over at Patreon because it helps keep the show going. And that's where we do all the bonus content. When you subscribe, you get all sorts of goodies. And uh, really where we do a lot of the game and we answer a lot of the questions. So patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, but also, if you want to support us individually, uh, I also do relationship consultations, life consultations. You can email me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com. That's where you reach me and we can set everything up. And Dante's yeah. does consultations as well. Go to DanteNero.com and click on consult. And follow me on uh, social media. All my stuff, my TikTok is starting to blow up finally. So come over there, support. Support me on my YouTube page. Uh, Twitter doesn't fuck with me for some reason. I'm not even not even because Elon Musk. That's what I want to say. I want to I want to leave Twitter and be like I left Twitter because uh, Elon. But really, it's because yeah. uh, Twitter don't don't treat me right. That nobody follows yeah. me on Twitter. You could do it. Could, but, Instagram, I'm all over the place. Yeah. Um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted. We're going to go on the Patreon and, and go get, get digging really deep on some technique and stuff on the end of this. Um, so don't forget to sign up for that. Um, I love y'all, man. Thank you. Let's get over it.